Welcome to the 35th anniversary of the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. Every February, the country's best curlers assemble for the national championship. This year, we gather in Grand Prairie, and the field contains some new names, along with some familiar names. The Scotties Championship for Manitoba. Jennifer Jones aims for a record time sixth title, but they all begin this week on equal footing, and they all begin this week with just one goal. That's to win the Scotties next. And day one is also picture day here at the Scotties. There they are, the 15 provinces, territories, all hoping to compete in this year's Scotties Tournament of Hearts. As on this uh, Saturday, we say hello, Canada, and welcome to Revolution Place on our opening day coverage. Of course, it's a field of 12, but we only knew 11. There are guaranteed spots in the field, leaving the other four to play the pre-qualifying tournament. And after round robin, it means that Carla Thompson from Kamloops, B.C. and Kerry Galusha from Yellowknife will play in the deciding game to fill out the field of 12. And we're going to have that one for you. But also, to celebrate this 35th anniversary, we will have for the very first time multi-game coverage. If you want to watch that deciding game between B.C. and the territories, tune in to TSN 3 and 4. Or on TSN 1, you'll see Alberta against the defending champions, Team Canada and Jennifer Jones, as Canada's most comprehensive curling coverage just got more comprehensive for you. It is the first time that Grand Prairie has hosted the Scotties Tournament of Hearts and Carla Thompson and Team BC, she's trying to lead a team here at the Scotties for the very first time as a skip. She's flanked by a number of rookies taking on a veteran and Carrie Galusha and her team from the territories. Glad you're watching our coverage on TSN. Brian Mudrick joined by Kathy Goche. We were here for the Canada Cup. Always great to be back in my home province. And what a battle this is. One team will stay here for the Scotties. One team will go home. It's the territories. It's BC. And a lot of emotions riding high right now. Well, it's a really tough game. Most of the teams, once you win your province or territory, you know you're coming to play. Not so for here. The team that wins, they get to stay and experience all that the Scotties brings. The loser goes home. And they will join a very impressive field led by the defending champ, Team Canada, Jennifer Jones. Jen trying to make history, chasing her sixth Scotty's title as a skip. And many would say that Jen is the prohibitive favorite in this field. But as you'll see, there's a lot of teams that are really going to push Jen this week, starting with right beside her. The team from Alberta, Chelsea, skipped out of Manitoba. And now skipping out of Alberta, she is not going to go peacefully. Jolene Campbell, a one-woman wrecking crew in that Saskatchewan final. And Carrie Einerson knocked and knocked and knocked at the door. Fourth final, finally won it this year. Some faces returning as well. One you know very well, Kathy Goche, Jen Hanna. She was here in 2005 at the Scotties. You and Jen Jones pulled off the shot. Poor Jen hasn't forgot about that, but Hannah is back, and she's got such a positive attitude. Well, she really does. Life creates all sorts of opportunities, and for her, had a family, and really found out that she was missing this sport. She is back and will be playing very tough. And on both sides of her, Brian, Krista McCargill, Mary Fonslarouche, when they've been here before, They've medaled. They've done really well. They will be here towards the end of the week as factors. One province, Kathy, I'm watching closely has to be PEI, Suzanne Burt. Back in the day, it was Suzanne Goody. She came out a junior. How impressive was she in her first year at the Scotties? That 10-1 and one record since then hasn't found that success, but she's worked really hard. Well, she has. They put more time to it this year, and there is a different team for Suzanne. They are looking much stronger. Brought in Maddie Christensen from Nova Scotia, the partner of Adam Casey, now making her home in PEI. Stronger team than she's had they're very very positive and looking forward to a great week so who will join the field it's time to find out carla thompson from bc trying to punch her ticket taking on the veteran galusha trying to make her 10th appearance at the scotties first rock next from grand prairie alberta the 2016 scotties tournament of hearts is brought to you by scotties sponge towels purex and cashmere proud to support the scotties tournament of hearts
The 2016 Scotty's Tournament of Hearts is brought to you by World Financial Group, helping Canadians have better financial futures. By Tim Hortons, official copy of Curling Canada. And by Home Hardware, homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. Welcome back. It's day one, draw one of the Scotty's Tournament of Hearts. We are at Revolution Place. Home of the Grand Prairie Storm in the AJHL and a busy afternoon here in Grand Prairie on Sheet A. It is Maria France LaRouche, Team Quebec, taking on Ontario and Jen Hanna. Our feature matchup, BC versus the Territories. Winner will qualify for the Scotties Field. Great battle in Sheet C. Alberta, Canada. Jennifer Jones trying to make history this week in Grand Prairie. And it's Saskatchewan and Nova Scotia over on Sheet D. Time to meet the teams, brought to you by Home Hardware. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. Hi, I'm Carla Thompson, skip of Team British Columbia. Our lead is Trista Van Dale. Our second is Tracy Lavery. Our third is Kristen Rexiedler, and we curl out of the Kamloops Curling Club. Hi, I'm Carrie Galusha, skip of Team Northwest Territories. Our lead is Shona Barber, second Danielle Derry, third Megan Cormier, and we curl out of the Yellowknife Curling Center. They were the two best teams in pre-competition they meet today. Carrie Galusha will throw the Yellowstone. She chooses yellow because BC, they won last night 8, 6, and 11 ends. They got choice of hammer. They obviously took it, so they'll throw the Redstones. And to start things off, a very crucial game. It's basically winner take all. Winner will play in the Scotties oh. field. Sadly, the loser will Stop. go home. Stop. Shona Barba leads Stones for team Northwest Territories. I was watching a lot of the interaction just before the game, and we didn't talk about the bench strength, but it is something that I think is going to be a huge factor in this game, Brian. You look at who was on the bench for BC. You have a former world champion, Gary Vandenberg, with Jeff Stoughton, and you have Sasha Carter, longtime member of Kelly Scott's championship BC teams. Those are players that are going to really try to give to BC what they need. And on the other side, you've got John Epping coaching Kerry Galusha. Again, some real strength of advice and guidance in this game to keep the game simple in terms of how you approach it. It's no bigger than any other game you played, even though the results will be. You just have to keep cool. Trista Van Dale leads Stones for Team BC. And a little bit of a roll. Trista is a rookie on this team, as are Tracy and Kristen. Nine, five. Carla Thompson, the skip, is the only veteran of the Scotty. You see the rules of play, 10 ends, 38 minutes. You get two timeouts, and this is thinking time. Yeah. Nine and a half. Hard, Daddy. Get down. Really hard. Hard, you have to think, too, sorry, Daddy. Kathy, Shona Barber and their team, they've been through this before. They were in the pre-competition yes. last year. And Carrie brings all that Scotty's experience, trying to make her 10th appearance in the big field. Okay, They've been there, done that before, and they can certainly draw off that. They really can. And, you know, for Carrie Galusha was devastated four, last four. year in losing yeah. this game and not having the opportunity to compete. She is one of those teams that always has risen to the occasion, been a giant killer, has defeated Team Canada, regardless of who has worn the colors. But you can't do that unless you have the opportunity to compete See? in the entire week. So, for sure... Carrie's going to want this even more so than BC just because she lost the finals of this game last year. Danielle Derry, second stones for the team out of the Yellowknife Curling yep, Center. Yep, yep. Yeah, Meg. Meg. All the way. Go, oh, Megan, go!
And our first look at Tracy Lavery. Thank you. Represented Manitoba at the Junior Canadians yep. as a skip Lovely. years yep. ago. Yep. Whoa, Defected whoa. to warmer climates. <laughs> Also a lefty thrower on the ice. And we look at, Brian, what teams need to do in this particular game. And for them, both teams, it's very much so a concentration. But for Carrie Galusha, every shot is important. Her coach talked about how she focuses on the good teams and the, the big shots and not so much on the little ones. Needs to maintain that. And for Team BC, this is not about the outcome. If we win, we get to play in the entire Scotties. This is just about focusing on the game and the shot. It's process, not outcome. Keys to the game brought to you by World Financial oh, Group, helping Canadians yep. have better financial futures. Yes! Hard to it. Just a and as we look at Carla Thompson put the broom down, one thing we will notice at the Scotties, Kathy, Hi. is that there's no hairbrushes. Curling Canada coming out with that mandate. Now your option is, if there is a hair broom on the ice, it will be in the hands of the skip, and the skip can only utilize that hairbrush from the T-line, like behind the T-line, so not in front if they wanted to help sweep a stone in. Lots of changes afoot in our sport in the last year, really focusing on the brushes, the techniques for sweeping, and you can expect that during the course of the off-season, there will be a lot of discussions with Curling Canada, with the World Curling Federation about where brooms will go, what broom head fabrics will be allowed, trying to ensure that it's not only a level playing field, but also that it becomes, again, a thrower's game. You should have to hit the broom, and there should be merit when you do. And if you're just watching for the first time or new to the story, the theory was that those hair brushes and the really top end sweepers could actually make little cuts in the ice and make that rock curl a lot more and dramatically more. We're talking like three feet at times, not just a little bit, a lot. No, it was it was very dramatic. If you think about the the hair brushes, they're bristles and so they're abrasive and that can absolutely direct the stone. Not so much the synthetic, especially with the fabrics that are now being used. And again, these changes to remove the brooms are being driven by the top level curlers who do want the sport to remain what it always has been, a sport of integrity, a sport of where all the hard work that you put into it, not only in your physical fitness, but in your ability to hit the stick do matter. You should not be able to be as good as me. <laughs> Look it up. Shona. Shona, go, Shona. Yeah, Shona, go, go, go. Go, 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 Okay. And a good brush from Shona Barber, enough to remove the stone. The shooter will spill out, so a very yeah. opened end here like not, not in this like pre-competition final. Like the first end? <laughs> thing I loved about that, Kathy, the entire sweeping discussion, it was truly policed by the top end players themselves. It was very much. It was really neat to see that Bye, they... Guys. I guess as it worked up responsibility or saw what was happening, if you really want good proof of it, Brad Yushu's team put out a really interesting video on YouTube and really it breaks down. It shows how much the hairbrush and even the sweeping can make a rock move. It's it's incredible. To that point though, a lot of the synthetic surfaces made it curl just as much as well, so it's interesting. It's something that we'll be following, but we're excited to just see some great competition this week at the Scotties. A pretty wide open end, and you would expect that, not only on this sheet, but across most of the other sheets. Teams just feeling their way. They've been here for a couple of days. They've had practices. They've all participated in the hotshot competition, but this now is where the rubber really hits the road. It's game time, and so it is usually a little tentative for the first end or so. Lots of people in the building. Some came early to watch the opening ceremonies that took place just before this draw took place, and that's also very different when you're used to playing in a curling club. 
Only two provinces, Manitoba and Quebec, held their Scotties in an arena. So that's the two provinces that are used to hearing people clap or cheer or just being distracted by what goes on around you. Sorry, I didn't want it to Sorry, Jerry Galusha as well, a former oh, Ford Hot Shots nice. winner. Oh, yeah, Jennifer Jones, throw, your winner this year. We did know what it was going to do. About the same going the other I, way. Yeah, it ran nice. What a good chance for Carla in this opening end, first with Kristen and now with herself to find draw weight without a lot of pressure to be precise. Keeping in mind that on this sheet only, there was no draw to the button. That last rock advantage, as you said, Brian, awarded because they won that game. And, and so you don't really have those opportunities to have to draw against pressure until now. You want to talk about pressure? This absolutely blew my mind, Kathy Goche. Back in BC Provincials, Kelly Scott, who we know very well, world champion, six-time BC champion, Scotty's champion. Kelly Scott was up 7 nothing on Carla Thompson and I'm sure she's loving you saying in that the right one-two game oh Ouch. you know we love Kelly Scott and her team and you see that her former teammate Sasha Carter as you talked about is a fifth year but it just goes to show you that you're never out of it never they were down seven nothing they battled back and won that game and ended up beating Kelly Scott again in the provincial final and to my points never say never and that was impressive to keep battling down seven nothing it does show you how mentally tough this team is. Lots of intestinal fortitude to not pack your bags and go home, but to continue to fight and fight. You know what? And Kelly, if you are watching back home in BC, I do truly apologize. You're one of our favorites. I apologize. But very impressive from this. And a young team, too. I mean, Carla has been here before as a third. She's never skipped at the Scotties, and all of her teammates are rookies here. So good on them for their battle. Great oh, you got it, you got it, you got it. Had a girl. Great yeah. throw. Good throws, everyone. Yeah. yeah. Can you hear anything I'm saying? Uh, it's no, I'm not a tongue, no. <laughs> Person ahead just has to keep it's looking. Really got Keeping in mind, it's not only a combination of carries sort of being a little bit hoarse, but when they've played their other games to get to this point in the pre qualification, there was nobody else in the building. And so, very audible when somebody was yelling, these are things that you have to contend with when there's three other sheets in play. Final stone for Carla Thompson trying to blank the end and maintain hammer, and the lefty thrower will do just that. So in a must-win game, our pre-competition final at the Scotties locked up at zeros here. Day one in Grand Prairie. 44 curlers started the week with a chance to drive away in an all-new 2016 Ford Edge Sport in the annual Ford Hot Shots competition. That number trimmed down to just two. The final, PEI's Robin Green against Team Canada's Jennifer Jones. And Jones, the five-time Scotties champion, came up so big in that final round, almost perfect, scoring 29 of a possible 30 points. So, Jennifer Jones wins the Ford Hot Shots, and with it, a two-year lease on the Made in Canada 2016 Ford Edge Sports. The Hot Shots winner, Jennifer Jones, taking on Team Alberta. And Chelsea Carey, her squad, blanking the first stand, so they're still looking for their first points. You want to watch that one? It's live over on TSN 1. A good look at Revolution Place, our feature matchup. Team BC taking on Team Northwest Territories. Carla Thompson out of the Kamloops Curling Club, throwing the red stone. She blanked the first stand, so she has hammer here in two.
Carla keeping it pretty simple, and you have to know, we talked about the strength from the bench, Brian, and when you look at who these teams are bringing with them, they're not only bringing really strong curlers, as you look at Sasha Carter, a member of Kelly Scott's championship teams over the years, but one of the things that Sasha told us is that she talked to them a lot about rotation, and then you've got a coach in Gary Vandenberg, a world champion for Jeff Stout, and so these are not just people that are coming in a role to try to help they have very specific skill sets they know what it's like to compete at this level in sasha's case she knows what it takes to win what the rotation needs to be on the rock and she talked about the difference of their thursday night loss to nunavut where they lost handles on almost all of their stones from lack of rotation to where they are now feeling much more confident with the style of play and how they're throwing huge kudos to what's coming off the bench for this bc team Sasha winning those Canadian championships in 2006 and 2007 and a world champion as well in 2007 with Kelly Scott. And on that note, Kathy Goche, we do want to send a big congratulations out to Team Nunavut. Their first ever win was against BC at the Scotty. So congratulations to Geneva Chislett and her team. Well, and you look at the other side of the bench, Brian, somebody that we saw in an Ontario final, John Epping, of just a super stronghold this year on the curling circuit. He brings so much talent. He's so enthusiastic about trying to help, was working with another team in Ontario when they didn't win. Kerry had talked to him at the curl for the kids last year, really felt that he could add a lot. And when the opportunity presented itself, he offered his services. He talked to us just about the little things, about attitude and how they play. Trying to have Carrie keep a simpler game to play with the abilities of her team. These are the kinds of pieces of advice that really help teams who do have the skills and just maybe don't have the direction. And as you know, Ontario is not exactly a quick drive up to the Northwest Territories. <laughs> so they actually did a lot of work via Skype. And yeah. He would talk to them all the time on Skype and such a great guy to chat with John telling us before this game that the big thing for him is Carrie's always been very aggressive yes he said if anything we've tried to dial her back just a little bit her game management has been huge and the big thing we've said this a thousand times up here in the booth Kathy communication amongst your teammates all those things he said they've really tried to improve on and I think even more importantly Carrie finding the passion again she said she just really lost it met up with him at the curl for kids charity event talked to John about it even John said in October she still really wasn't feeling that spark and he was a big motivator so I'll tell you what if they do qualify and enter this field big assist to John Epping for really finding and helping her regain that spark now one of the things I thought that was really important that John talked to him about is don't have your expectations where the other teams are that have been playing a ton all year. They do not have the opportunities in Northwest yeah. Territories with the numbers of teams and the caliber of the number of teams to be at that level. So start with what you're good at. Keep it simpler. Let your team get some success early and then build on that. And so far we're seeing a relatively conservative game and it may mean that's what the coaches have told both of them to do. All there, you know. John Epping had a pretty good zinger too. He ran into a few of our TSN colleagues in the airport, which was awesome as well, and made the joke, hey, I made it to a Scotty's before a Briar, which is pretty funny. He's such a good sport though. He's always a lot of fun and, and a great great guy to chat with. So good on him. What a final against Glenn oh Howard. Goodness. It was incredible. I mean, both of those guys made world class shots. That would have been an epic game in a Briar semifinal yes. or one two game and Glenn still got it. Congratulations to we'll see Glenn Howard and his team. In Ottawa. You bet. Here. That was an entertaining final. That was yeah. great. Really close. Jonah. Jonah. Yep. yep. Go, buddy. Hard, buddy. Hard, hard, hard. Reach, reach, reach. Really hard. Pull it out. 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 Well, they're getting a good workout on their hitting game here, Kathy, in the first two ends. Well, you hear that comment by Kerry, lost its handle. These teams do not play in arena circumstances very often, and it is huge. Just the rocks are a little bit sharper, and if you don't have a very crisp release, you're going to see it straighten out. Something that these teams get better at with time on arena ice, but the clock is ticking for both of them about whether they will actually get to get this entire week on arena ice. 
and a big scrub on Kristen Rexiedler Stone. Got to get a piece, and they will not be able to remove it. Advantage, Kerry Galusha. Rex Seedler's a three-time BC Junior Champ. Okay, let's go, Kerry. Well, this is it for Carrie. You know, most of these other teams are just starting to show up. She's already got a win-loss column against her. It was that loss last night, and it was in an extra end. A steal by BC and 10, and then it was that loss. And, you know, the team curling percentage, well, okay, they're starting, they're going to get better. But what was really interesting is the points stolen 15 in their last appearance at a Scotty's did not steal a point. So there are some really good things that the Galusha team can take out of their performance so far. Wait, slow. Okay. Four foot girls, top four. Seven. Oh, it's running Seven. a bit. There it goes. It's going now. You talked about Carrie stepping it up for the big it's games really too back going. in 2009. Really okay, she was the first ever team channel. back then from Yukon okay. Northwest Territories to knock off Team Canada. She certainly gets yeah, up for the big games, but it needs it here that, as well. That pick, sorry, Carrie. I don't know if it was a handprint or what. That was perfect, too. Now, reference there. Perfect, too. Yeah. A bit of an unfortunate circumstance for the Galusha team. They feel that it picked or it, some debris, otherwise, that her weight was fine. Well, in the same story, you know, three games to their credit, and you talk about that Nunavut, the historic win. You never want to be in the history books as the team who lost, but the reality was that was the game Sasha Carter said they lost over 50% of their stones to no handles just coming off. It's where you learn when you play on arena ice, and some pretty good numbers. They're both in the 70s, and when you're playing on arena ice and learning what it does, you expect that those numbers for whoever goes through will climb. Carla played third back in Regina in 2008 for Allison McGuinness. They were four and seven in round robin play that year. Back four. Sit. Sit down. Here's a bit of a gutsy call, deciding that she wants to take two. Her option for sure, if she wanted to blank again, would be to hit and stick on that stone out in the wings. That would have forced Carrie Galusha out there. The challenge is by sliding behind the T line. Yet even, with a little bit less than eight, yeah, yeah it would have been. Yeah, maybe rubbing. So. Okay. You'd mentioned Kathy that a lot of the provincial playdowns, these women don't get to compete oh, on the arena oh, ice. Actually, I believe yeah. only two provinces do. Correct. Correct. Quebec and Manitoba this year. Which I found awesome in covering the juniors this year. The first time ever. The men's Wonderful. and women's juniors were not only under the same facility, under the same roof, but all of them got to compete on arena ice. Fabulous opportunity for all of those kids that were there, and it's no surprise that Matt Dunstone comes from winning a Canadian championship after a week on arena ice, goes right back into an arena in the Manitoba men's, and was the finalist to Mike McEwen. I mean, that time on arena ice did nothing but help them. And finally, we will see Mike McEwen. We will. At his first briar in Ottawa as well. And kind of not the way he probably drew it up. He knew he was going before even playing the final. And full credit to Matt Dunstone and his young team. And we wish them all the best in chasing that world gold medal in representing Canada at the World Juniors. Kerry could have elected to come down and draw to that stone. Is looking to play a half weight. Tap back to lie two to force BC. All the way out, all the way, 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 And they move it enough to be third shot. Yeah, I think, yeah, I still think I need a hair less weight though. Yeah, yeah, a little bit less. So draw the forefoot for the single here for BC and a good test early for Carla Thompson. All right. <laughs> I saw it coming down. down. Um... No. Okay. A lot of great families in curling as we look at Carrie. We'll get to see both of her brothers once again go head to head 
at the Briar as well. In Jamie and Kevin. Hard girls. Hard girls. Hard girls. Yep, 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 yep. Final stone yep, on the yep, way yep, here yep, in yep. two for hard. Carla Thompson. Pretty good scrub the entire get way. It, now it, all hands on deck. Ball. Find that it, blue paint. And they will. A good scrub from their front end as BC strikes first. A point on the board in a must-win situation at Grand Prairie. Let's get you up to date. This one you can watch live on TSN 1. Vic Router with the call. Alberta taking on Team Canada. And out of the Glencloe Cup in Calgary, it's Chelsea Carey leading this team, playing with Amy Nixon, Jocelyn Peterman, and Lainey on, Peters, Kim. Final Stone. And the young skip needs a nice draw here, Kathy. She does. A nice double early by Alberta. Got them out of trouble. But it is Jennifer Jones and her Team Canada team that is shot stone, so needs a bite of the forefoot. Line looks good, weight looks good. Well flipped, you guys. And it is the single, so Chelsea Carey. Still weird seeing her in that Alberta jacket, isn't it? Yeah, it, it sure on? is. <laughs> <laughs> She's up one nothing there. Meantime, update Nova Scotia and Saskatchewan. And a little bit of yellow granite in the house, and that's what faces Jolene Campbell making her debut as a rookie skip really and her final stone. Should be really close. Drawing against a couple. And for Nova Scotia, without their skip today, was ill yesterday and is still not feeling well enough to play. We wish you good health and get back here soon. And you hear the voice of Ashley Howard. That is Russ Howard's daughter playing at her first ever Scotties. And yet that voice is so pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> I said finally a Howard that could do the interview, which is uh, outstanding. So a nice draw there. And Quebec, Ontario, they are tied up at one as well. Maria France LaRouche and Jen Hanna going head to head. We do wish the best for Jill Brothers not feeling well. Sarah Murphy is skipping in this game for Team Nova Scotia. They actually, Kathy, which will help. They have an alternating lineup anyways. Not in the way they wanted to alter no. it, but we hope Jill Brothers is feeling better. In the meantime, our feature matchup. A must-win game in this pre-competition final at the Scotties. BC taking on Team Northwest Territories. BC with the Red Stones, it was Carta Thompson. Nice draw weight. She picks up her single, but Carrie Galusha will have Hammer here in three. And Carrie's steering the ship now in a very different approach. Ignored the BC Stone in the house and immediately went to the corner guard. And so you will see Rocks here in play in the third end. Kathy, one thing that alternate Sasha like Carter that, said like about her BC girl. side, and maybe yeah, people yeah. at home may not understand or may understand, when you talk about the difference between club no, ice, like arena ice, and the sharpness of the stones, what is the difference for a curler coming into a venue like this? Oh gosh, there's so many things. So the biggest thing I think that on arena ice is that if you don't have a very strong rotation, the rocks that are a little bit sharper will take that rotation off the stone and then you wind up with something that's just floating and drifting. And you can get away with that in a curling club because sometimes it actually gives you more curl. Out here, you get a straight handle and it gives you nothing. So you definitely need a more precise release, uh, a more definite turn. The other thing is the break point. In the curling club, you can see it coming for miles. It just starts to move. Arena ice tends to run straight, and then when it gets to a break point, it starts to go. And if you don't anticipate it, jumping on it late isn't going to save the stone. So it's when you call it, it's how you call it. There are a lot of differences, Brian. It's wonderful, wonderful to play on. I don't think anybody that's played on arena ice ever wants to go back to a curling club, but it is a difference if you're not used to it. I loved it, loved it, loved it. Good line. 
So Carey trying to utilize that corner guard that they threw earlier. Get a stone buried. If you're interested in times, I split Carla's last one, the drop with a single point. It was 14 and a half between the hogs. That is pretty quick. Right back, right back, right back, right back. Push, 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 push. Really good speed. Yeah, good speed, you guys. Good Danny. Very nice weight. 10, 10, 10 and a half. 10? 10. Okay, let's go. So for those not familiar, Kathy, when they say 10 or 10 and a half, that's the time from hog line to hog line with a stopwatch. So you'd hit the stopwatch, for example, Ten. right now, there. Which I've done just for you. Ten. You're well trained I after did. all these years. <laughs> and of course, we would hit the stopwatch once again, right there. Now, so it's a 10-2. So that's very close to what the weight was that they asked for. And these lively rocks that will spill out. Now, I asked the question before the competition. Curling Canada has access to a lot of different stones. Now, these stones, Kathy, come from where? These stones are actually the Alberta stones. So Jamie Barassa, the head ice technician, will have brought these stones with him. These were used in the Alberta Scotties and in the Alberta men's playdowns. And so even though Curling Canada's got their logos on them, they are the rocks that stay here. So advantage, if you will, well, that might be Chelsea Carey because she's played with them. Or people who have spouses that played with them, like Jennifer Jones or someone like John Epping that maybe have friends that will give him information. These rocks will be a little bit quicker, he feels, and curl a little bit more than the rocks that were used at the Canada Cup and will be used at the Briar. These are things that teams will have to adjust to. And the only reason that they're not the same stones is there was concern about the stones leaving here Monday and being able to be in Ottawa by Wednesday for no, the Briar. And so instead that. of risking yeah. that the stones don't get there in time, they've decided to use two different sets of stones. So that's impressive. Jamie just brings the stones carry on in his luggage. Yes, he all just of them. them with them. All Excellent. of them, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he must have great status on his flights. Top four. <laughs> Back four. Fine, fine. Kristen Rex Siedler. Yep, yep. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Third stones for Team BC, and this one will settle back eight. Now that handle straightened out again, and that does two things. It doesn't finish as much, and it sort of floats. Another great example of the BC rotation challenges that they've talked about. And so a chance Same for way. the team from the north to get down on top Play of that. Calling it back to the stone, if it was buried, does not need to be back Sorry. there. In fact, it's remember, arguably in a better I spot, fully buried. To. No, I know we accidentally. Okay. I think the ice would be pretty good, eh? Yeah, did you get a tone? Pretty good weight from Megan Cormier. And we've watched this team, Carrie Galusha, we've seen Megan a number of times as well. Kathy, I am impressed with their communication. I find them a lot more vocal, even in just right. this you game that we're covering, yeah, than I've heard them in a long time. Well, you talked about what John said to you before the game about communication being key. And I think that, you know, sometimes you can feel pretty self-conscious about there, especially when there's only one sheet about yelling all the time. But the only way that you can relay information as a brusher is by sharing it with the skip. Even if you change your mind three times, that's still some intel. And they are being more vocal. And I think that's good. We're all there. Let her know where. T-line, back four. Line only. Tracy, Trace. You, you, you. Trace, two it, guys. Line's good. Trying to no corner bomb. freeze without a bounce. No bump. Sit. Sit. Carla Thompson, a little bump. She is shot stone. Let's take you back, though, to last end. And we talked about Carrie Galusha. She needs to come up 
big, even though she's not taking on a Team Canada per se. But this game means everything, and she had a very nice shot last night. But what I really think is that Carrie had two choices. She could have drawn, but this shows her experience. This is a very soft back weight shot. Lots of rotation. Brought the two stones into play. And that was the force momentum. Giving Carrie the hammer back, which is what she wants. The key shot brought to you by Cashmere Bathroom Tissue. Nothing feels like cashmere. Oh, good, you grabbed yellow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so just here. Get on the corner. Yeah. Yeah. So a couple of options. One of them, as you hear Carrie Galusha talking about, this is what they're choosing. That's pretty precise. But if you also take a look at the room that she's got by the guard, she could certainly come down here with that same kind of weight that she just threw, put that stone there, and then move that red stone back. That's an option as well. Very similar to the kind of weight that in the shot that we just showed is changer. But it's not obviously something she's considering. She's playing the draw. It is, yeah. Yeah, it's real nice here. Yeah. It'll throw hard at the end. What kind of time can we expect here, Kathy? Well, it's about 14 and a half. Seven. Okay, four foot. So when they yell seven, that's actually the zone of where they think the stone will stop, correct? Yep, so they're saying right off the bat they felt that she was right at the tee. All the way, girls. Hard, girls. And I got 15 yeah, two on that, over, so that's not going to get there. Just keep curling it. Keep Cormier curling it. and Derry, yeah, yeah, they didn't yeah, yeah, yeah. stop scrubbing this. They will drag it to Sorry, touch the 12. We got a slow time. Yeah. But BC, yeah. still your shot stone. I don't know. Hey. We can leave, we'd leave an easy double. What if we go? We don't need to be in, in the ring, so yeah. I'll leave with a wide draw here. Yeah. So are we coming full 12? Yeah, I think if it's, I think lines more important, okay? Yeah. Just as long as it's kind of blocking that Trista's spot. kind of hung out a little bit, hey? When she threw here? Yeah, I think mine, I think that'll be good to okay. get to center. Okay. Okay. We talked about bringing it right in, yeah. but then we're like, well, yeah, just giving her something. Kind of just in front of it, make her draw wide. Okay. So just the three then? Yeah. Yeah, I like it. So Carla just sharing with the team that this is remembering what their objective was in this end. And their objective very clearly was to steal. So trying to block off the distance between that red and the yellow and the 12 foot. That will force Carry way outside to a brand new path and she'll need to get a bite of the forefoot even actually a so half a stone eight. in the forefoot to score Two, the point how much do you have to be aware kathy obviously wait, wait, she wait. is a lefty wait, wait. carrie galusha is right-handed is there a big difference in icing in the release well there is definitely in terms of where your stone goes the advantage obviously for carla is that she's iced herself before and so you probably just tune out a right-handed thrower Let's update you now. You can watch this one live on TSN 1. It's the defending champ, Jennifer Jones, Team Canada, throwing the yellow stones, but she is in some trouble. Chelsea Carey, the Manitoba native, now wearing those Alberta colors. And she is the home province favorite, putting some pressure on the defending champ. She sure has. Jennifer is trying to play an in-off from the wings to get to the four-foot area where the, there's two shot stones. And Don McEwen, what a scrub. Just get it by the red stone, bang the red, come across. Oh boy. That yellow stone will slide right through. And that is a steal of four. Ouch. So a great start for Chelsea Carey, her team out of the Glencoe in Calgary. Up 5-0. If you want to watch that one, you can watch it live right now on TSN 1. In the meantime, our feature matchup. Seven. Final stone to come here from Carey Galusha. And she needs a lovely draw here through the port to try and pick up her single. Well, the advantage for Carrie is that stone over curled by Carla, so that is certainly a port that's there. 
by the red guard, no problem. Now, how is the weight? Easy, easy, easy. Gotta sit down in time, gotta stop. A little more drag, and it's close. It sure is. Shoot. I don't think so. I'd say yellow, but <laughs> we'll let Shona Barber look it over. I'm allowed to say but. I hadn't finished my thought yet. But it could be red. <laughs> Stay one. Come on, Kat. Really? I can get your measure. Okay. Measure. Measure. So they will put a stick to it. We can confirm there will be one will point be scored. Question. How's that? That's outstanding. <laughs> it doesn't stop. I thought it was it slid hard. First one that actually slid. <laughs> I thought it was perfect. Yeah. I, I think it's us, but I didn't like really. Hindsight's obviously yeah. 2020, Kath, but yeah. maybe just a little sweeping error there. Oh, yeah. Well, it's tough because they have to make sure that they can get it through the port. They were looking at line all the way, and they knew the weight was close. They weren't playing for a tick. And so. I think you have to stay behind. <laughs> I'll get, I'll get knocked over. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Official. Almost to a two. And just wow. passed a two. That was very close. And so it will be one yellow. Great draw by Kerry Galusha. So technically, I wasn't wrong. Well, you weren't right. Let's confirm that, Kathy. <laughs> one, one here in Grand Prairie. Welcome back to Revolution Place. The first time Grand Prairie has hosted the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. 35th edition of the Scotties. And both of these teams trying to fight their way into the main draw. Both skips as well. Kathy Goche with some nice draw weight. You saw Carla Thompson, the end before, making a really nice draw. And then in three, Kerry Galusha answering. She draws the forefoot, almost slid too far. We're all tied up at one here in the fourth end. Settle behind the T line. Lead stones from okay. Trista Van Dale. When you heard her calling, don't leave it back there. With last rock advantage for BC, you'd rather it be in front of the T line for sure. But if it's not going Seven. to be in front, you are better to take that stone back as far as you can so that when your opponent freezes on, which is exactly what Carrie Galusha is playing, you have room to get on top. You see Shona Barber's first stone, the yellow guard, and this one is sliding. Thanks, Sorry. Okay. A little rub, it'll stop on the button for a shot stone. Completely different, hey? Yeah. Holding on. numbers so far for Trista and a lot of these BC players trying to make their first ever Scotty's appearance. I know we got to go in the way back machine here, Kathy Goche, but do you remember your first Scotty's appearance? Oh, that's rude. I was smiling at you. I didn't know you were going to talk about me. Um, for Oh, I don't know. <laughs> 100%. I remember every Scotty's appearance, but my first one, for sure. Halifax, Nova Scotia, one of the most remarkable experiences of my life. I had dreamed about getting to the show and uh, joined with Connie uh, Laliberti, and uh, it was amazing. It was wonderful. And we had the extra bonus of actually being able to win it that year. But I I think that I, I cannot emphasize enough that... Um, it's just so hard, Brian. You're so overwhelmed because it's your dream that when you're playing with people that have been there before as I was, it made a world of difference, which is why I go back to who is on the bench with these players. It is overwhelming when it's your dream to play, and it's this close for both of these teams. Uh, you do need that little calm voice on the bench saying, just think about the intern and the outturn. Don't worry about the results. Okay. Got 
we do our sit-down interviews with all the skips before the competition begins and sat in on the interview with Jennifer Jones who's yes. chasing her sixth Scotty's title as a skip and she was asked have you thought about that I mean the great Colleen Jones has six as well and to your point she said man as a young girl you just dream of playing in one Scotty yes. someday and having that opportunity you don't dream about winning six of them but no. what a special career that Jennifer Jones has had you throw in that Olympic gold medal as well it's been phenomenal and for a very long time it's it's been at least the last decade that she has been at the top of the sport. That is a huge commitment to throwing rocks and taking time out and traveling and doing all the things that you need to do and staying fit. It's, uh, it is overwhelming sometimes, I'm sure. What are you thinking? I don't know. It's too bad that one wasn't over. Like, I don't... Did this nail it? What if you just moved them around a bit? Well... I think, I think they both go, don't they? We just nail it here. Well, yeah, I think we throw peel and nail it anywhere on here. Here's the other option. Right, and that's you don't have the hammer, you draw right on top. All okay. of a sudden, their own stones that are in the house become an issue yeah, for it. Team BC. Instead, they're not comfortable with those stones being there, and so they're going to try to remove them both. Daniel Derry, second stones out of the Yellow Knife Curtain Center. Bang her own. Now the drag won't catch that red stone. Shooter goes, and the other yellow stone spins. Back eight, so BC shot stone with hammer here in four. Like that? They thought that redstone would drag a bit, Kathy, or just was the angle the off angles there? The were just yeah. off. Ten. Ten. Clean. Yep. Clean. Yep. We talked Whoa. about Carla having that left-handed release. It's nice Carla. when your second has one as well, so you get another look at icing a lefty, and that shooter will roll out. So. It's been a number of shots that they have played outside in, and I think that... Carla's just tight icing them a little bit, thinking that they're going to run a little bit straighter in a curling club where they have played most of their their curling. It definitely does run straighter outside in. There is a lot of movement in the wings. That's about the third stone they've overrolled, and I heard her say, I need to start giving you more ice. And I don't think she means Tracy. I think she just means the entire team. So the door back open for the Northwest Territories. Megan Cormier. Makes that nice, redstone go away. to the wings, make it a little bit more difficult for the Galusha team to hit and stick out there. Okay, bud, straight through, let's go. Let's update you now over on Sheet A, Quebec taking on Ontario. Marie-France LaRouche throwing the red stones. Great to see her back at the Scotties. I remember, Kathy, just a few years ago, she lost the bronze medal game hit to Jennifer Jones, trying to come back with a vengeance here in Grand Prairie. Final stone. In off try. Little roll. Oh, what Bumped a nice yellow. shot. Marie-France LaRouche. Lovely. Nice pistol of a shot early on, so could get back getting two on the board there, and a 3-2 advantage after four. And there's someone that just loves this game. It is evident. You saw that big smile after she made the shot. But, you know, there's a lot of people out here that you look at the concentration on their face, and it's, it's like work. Uh, but for Marie France, just loves everything about this sport. Great to see that shot. 
that doubles for the booth up here as well, Kathy hey, Goche, right? Absolutely. Some days it's fun. Some days it feels like work. <laughs> well, there is you. <laughs> and both sides continue to trade open hits. That was good. Down to skip stones here in four. And this style of play for sure does not lend itself to any sort of difficulties with the time clocks. I find this field, Kathy, really fascinating. We looked at the teams off the top of the show, and some of the big names didn't make it through. Val Sweeting, knocked off by Chelsea Carey, who's a fantastic player in her own right. You look at Rachel Holman not coming through. Jen Hanna made it all the way to the final the last time she was at the Scotties. You look at the field, obviously Jennifer Jones, defending champ Team Canada, has to be one of the favorites, if not the favorite. You could look at Chelsea Carey coming out of Alberta. And then really, there's a lot of teams that could maybe surprise, maybe come up and fight for that 3-4 spot. I think it's gonna be a fascinating week. I think it is a very flat field, a very even field. Um, very tough to predict winners of all the games, which makes it really exciting. You talk about the pre-competition format as well. It wasn't too long ago that a young Tracy Fleury, now was Tracy Horgan, now Tracy Fleury actually got it right for a change. And their team out of Northern Ontario had to come out of that pre-competition and they nearly fought themselves into a playoff spot for that sure. year. But you're playing basically three, four games before the Scotties actually technically begins and then you get late in the week and that's a lot of curling, but that's a great example of how a team can get hot oh, and come can. out of this game. It absolutely can be done, I believe that. Carla Thompson will make the stone go away, her shooter, there you see it. Hangs on, back 12. And we didn't see this one coming. Team Alberta taking on Team Canada. That steal of four from Chelsea Carey was huge. In three, final stone on the way now for Jennifer Jones in four. Looks like she's trying to play that thin double to bring the yellow stone at the back of the house and play for two. Can't move the red enough. No, she cannot. So just a single and a 5-1 advantage now for Team Alberta. You can watch that one live right now over on TSN1 with Vic Router, Cheryl Bernard, Russ Howard. And Stephanie LeDrew joining our broadcast team here at the Scotties, providing updates as well. So we welcome Steph. Got to work with her at the Juniors in Stratford, Ontario. Welcoming Steph aboard. A more. Danny, Danny, yep. Danny, hard. Hard, Danny. Right to it, right to it, right to it. Hard. Hard. Go, 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 go. Carrie Galusha right on the nose, and she'll keep the shooter. So the blank attempt now to come here from... Carla Thompson in four. But my weight was decent. Really so good there. Yeah, good job. Thanks for the cheerleading. <laughs> One thing stood out to me in talking with John Epping now here as a coach. John has played in some incredible games oh, yes. in his own right in high pressure situations. He says, this has been absolutely awful just sitting and watching his guts are just going inside out in watching these women battle for their Scotty's hopes. Final stone here from Carla Thompson had some trouble getting the landing gear down. Let's see if she can get it done. She takes the long roll, but still gets the job done. So a blank on the board for Team BC here in the fourth end. We're all tied up at one in this pre-competition final. Scotties. Sorry, guys. And welcome back to Grand Prairie, Alberta. Draw one, day one of the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. Brian Mudrick, Kathy Goche with you for this pre competition final. Winner moves on to the main Scotties field. BC taking on Team Northwest Territories. And a tight game so far. A couple blanks on the board, a couple draws for singles. BC blanking that fourth end, so Carla Thompson and her team from the Kamloops Curling Club with the Red Stones Quick. with Hammer Quick. here in five. Quick. 
all four sheets in action this afternoon in Grand Prairie. Update time, Saskatchewan, Nova Scotia, and what an opportunity here. Final stone coming from Jolene Campbell out of the Highland Curling Club in Regina, making her skipping debut at the Scotties. And this is a draw for a whole bunch, Kathy Goche. It is already lying four and needs the eight foot four five. Really curling. Team Nova Scotia led by Jill Brothers out of the Mayflower in Halifax. Sadly, Jill not feeling well under the weather. I don't think this will make her feel any better. Five on the board, so a 6-3 advantage. Sarah Murphy, her third, is skipping the team. We want to send Jill our best. Hopefully she's feeling better and we'll see her back on the ice soon. Good thing for Jill. Nova Scotia does not play this evening. That draw is a bye for them. So hopefully oh, between good. tonight and overnight, it'll give her a chance to recover. So Kathy, a few blanks. Mm -hmm. We've had some stones in play, some nice draws from both skips. Is this what you expected? Yes and no. I think that the yes part is that I expected that it would be a little bit conservative. I think that both teams have had opportunities to make an aggressive decision to potentially put more stones in play. Last hand, Kerry Galusha certainly could have come down on top of that mixed instead. Played the hits. Um, so, you know, I think that we're expecting a little bit of a conservative style and no in the sense that I think that both of them have got to decide that they really want it, and maybe that's, this is the end that we'll see that take place. That was a pretty good political answer, eh? Uh, yes and no. Very good. Yes. Here, On one hand. What? <laughs> Well, we are going in Ottawa soon, so uh, you're, you're getting my ready. My people, going home to you're, my people. You're getting ready. Fine, really close. Yep, gotta go a bit. Gotta go a little. Go Daniel ahead. Derry, go second ahead. stones go for go, go, go. the team from the Unite really Curling down. Center. This would be her Scotty's debut three. if they can go, go. indeed win this game and three qualify to the main draw. Get to a three, get to a three. Hard guys. Uh, guys. Okay, and there really is so very though, much on the line as teams. You, you really can't think I about can't, it, but like one of the uh, the trademarks of playing in a Scotties is the necklaces that come with winning your territory or your province. And even though these teams are all here, they do not get jewelry unless they're full participants in the week. And so not only is it an opportunity to represent your territory or your province at the national championship, if you win, you get the jewelry that goes with it and the potential of an amazing week of learning and development and potentially winning. So there is a great deal on the line this afternoon. Right on the button behind cover for BC. They do have the hammer here in five. And are well set up. And so for Carrie Galusha now wants to remove some of that granite out front, even though it is hers. It is BC that lies too buried. Whoa! Close. Whoa! Close! Whoa! Close. Derry trying to deliver the mail. One yellow gets the yellows going, but. The two red BC stones like remain. Okay, yeah. come around the corner? It looks like it was coming up. Leave yeah. it up front. Wrap it? So I can arrow shade light, eh? Yeah. Okay, like, like yeah. Yep. Okay, later.
BC wanting to lie three, considered for a moment utilizing their corner guard that they had out, but then feeling that Kerry Galusha is going to play that in turn and freeze down to the face of the shot. Stone trying to take that away from her. It's okay, that works, that works. Try and get that, or yeah. I'll just play that. You can see most of this. I like that. Keeping yeah. in mind there is a Those long two. yellow guard that is in the way of making that like Double. There it is. I like big. Well, okay. Okay, hey, Megan, straight through. Let's go. Whoa! Yeah. Yeah. This is one way to get some brownie points with Skipper. Needs a big shot here from Megan Cormier. By the guard. Bang the red. And the one red Good stone night. will not spill far enough, so BC is still lying too. <laughs> yeah. What do you like? I mean, you could come around these way. These not two. That easy. Well, that's really long. Yeah. I mean, you could come. Right. I mean, they could come this way, yeah. right? So. Yeah, that's either. Either way. What do you think? I don't want to hit it though. No, not hit. What if we just go here? Come this way? Okay. Trying to navigate that port One. and get another stone in play. It is one of those shots that when you're right on top of it, it looks like there's a lot of room to go through. But then when you sit in the that's hat. It's really long, Kristen. There's okay. lots of room to curl. And that's a really great coaching piece from the skip at the other end. It's She knows, she can sense that Kristen's feeling a little bit uncomfortable. But that long yellow guard is so long, you have to eliminate it from your mind. It's not there. And consider it not in play. You've seen it so many times before. It's easy in the broadcast booth here, Kathy, but the person throwing the stone has to believe in the shot, no matter what the skipper says. So true. They're by the long guard now. How far can they drag it? Sit. Sit. Great shot. Chris That's a peach. Go. Unreal. Through the two yellows, and she drew it up just fine. What a shot from Kristen Rexiedler. Well, and that's a great team shot. She could sense the skip that for Kristen was a little bit unsure because of that long guard told her to remove that thought from her mind just throw it nice Sit. Sit. not only shot. navigates Kristen through Can't stops in time <laughs> yep. Yep. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. and here comes the run back try now for Megan Cormier yellow back and she'll catch the one red Kristen will try to replicate what she did on her first one. Want to drag it into the paint Good. and Good. Rex Seeler with another one. BC line three. Some other scores to pass along. Ontario, Quebec all locked up at three. Marie France LaRouche with hammer and five. What a start for Chelsea Carey, Team Alberta. Up 5-1 over Jennifer Jones, the yeah. defending champs.
And Saskatchewan, a big five on the board in the fourth end to lead Nova Scotia six to three. Jill Brothers, the skip under the weather, not playing in that contest. Sarah Murphy is skipping the team from the Mayflower. And we have a timeout. John Epping will make his way down the sheet. Obviously, they could tell that John was not happy with the run back. Those are the two first things that came into my head. And regardless of how well he knows this team, he certainly knows the game. Since we just saw it twice. Yeah, I like that. You always have that. Yeah, we thought we could save that for my last one if we needed to, but you want me to try it now? Well, the big thing is right now, like, as long as we get something in behind this wall, we're pretty, yeah. we're pretty happy, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, I mean, even really if you make happy. the one go and open it up and they come in again and put one top 12, a little bit mm -hmm. under, you're still in the same position. Right now, if, if you can make the hit and roll in behind, even if you're in behind, just straight in behind mm -hmm. the other. We threw a couple here in one and three with that intern. Yeah. So throw the intern at it with like yeah, whatever, easy. Yeah, or you can throw whatever way you like comfortable. You like throwing it a bit firm because you've seen it. But we've seen that. We've seen a few here. So what, what kind of way do you throw like a good nine? Probably like yeah, normal. Good nine. So good nine. If you hit, if you hit like uh, between two thirds and a half. I think you'll roll right into the uh, in the side of the fourth, but almost in the side, right beside that. Okay, okay. I don't mind that. You, are you we okay looked with at that? it. Yeah, I just yeah. didn't know if was, we should. It, it was we that. liked the shot, but we didn't know when to do it. So well, that's. And, then, and, the thing, <laughs> and, and the next thing is, if, if after this we can tap the yellow, we still have. To yeah. You see official Tom yeah, McPhee there with a stopwatch. Okay. Okay. Ninety second time yeah, out, coming to an end. Well, I thought John Epping did some really great. Uh, pieces of advice. That is not even a very good sentence. He gave them some great pieces of advice. So he didn't want them to play the run back now. He felt that that hit and roll out in the wing creates the opportunity that you get that roll behind. And maybe you're not shot, but you're going to really minimize the scoring area. And he also coached them through the next shot. So when this is done, we're not going to make that long run back. On our next shot, we're going to play the tap of that tight yellow stone again to keep a stone buried so he's not only talked them through this shot and why but he's already said to them and here's what we'll do on the next one very effective timeout okay. we threw quite a few here this is pretty tight compared to what we were taking yeah the first couple of days but i think it's, i don't think it's gonna feel like it left. yeah that whole conversation too kathy just such a great indicator of the respect level that Carrie has for John as well. I mean, right away she's like, "You want me to try this now? No problem." Yeah. Yeah. Wait. I'm going pretty firm. Okay. But I guess you know what? You're not bringing Kathy Gochi along to not listen to her, right? You got to listen to her. That's the whole point here. Well, hey. for sure, for John hey. Epping, you don't want to. Can she pull it off now, oh. Carrie Galusha? Roll it over, move the red stone. Oh, wow. What a shot from the skipper. Shot stone for Kerry Galusha. Well, that's a great shot. Yeah, I would like bumper. They talked about the turn, they talked about the weight in that timeout. Great outcome. Things were not looking good for the Northwest Territories in this end, and that shot. Certainly changing the dynamics for now. This bumper. Okay. So, Kathy, just try navigate past that long yellow guard and play the bump. Is that what she's attempting here? I'm not sure whether she's playing the double tap, the yellow red. Onto the yellow stone. Bumper, bumper. Close. Yes. We're trying to get through the yes. hole. Looks like through the hole. They're close by the guard. Got to finish. They'll play a little audible okay. tick, but okay. will not work out. That's me. Okay. Sorry. She does have two reds now to promote with her final stone. Okay. I should. Do we want to be hitting the three or not at all? No. Yeah, that's not bad. 
Yeah, that's what my first thought was. I mean, we're if we guard, we she's either drawing to this or a tab. This is nice. Now nah, let's guard it up right in the middle. Shoot. Let's put it right here. You can, but I think Carrie knows that there's also that Carrie red run back to, to I mean, lie or to take three. She's, all she has is the tap or run. Or do we guard? Well, I think steal. Well, it's, guard, it's the time. guarder that bumped the, the back one. If we I miss mean, it, she had that. Runs, what I just threw, too, though. Uh, that's only two. Right for yeah. three. I don't think we I think yeah, we can't I draw in, hey? Okay. Just with board weight. Okay. Okay. Yep, let's go. Yep. I don't if mind this shot for a number yeah. of reasons. You can see probably yeah. three quarters from the hack. The other thing so is you can tell from Carrie's three. body language yeah. that when Shona was talking through the guard that that was not something she was bought into. Doesn't mean that it was a wrong idea by Shona, but you have to go with what your gut is. She can see Maybe a I chunk of that stone. got the whole thing here so but it's a trophy. straight through let's go no i don't think so either i think we need to hang out here as long yeah, as I'll we can a little more than board yeah i can see it all okay okay let's go come on bud okay you got it straight through control Whoa. she had a pistol control. with her first her final Megan, stone now here in Megan, five go. carrie galusha Trying to make that red stone go away. Oh dear. Worst God. case scenario. What a terrible break for Carrie Galusha. Talk about momentum swings in this right. end, Kathy. Unreal. Very much yeah. so. That's a really unfortunate break for Carrie Galusha and the team right, okay. from the north. Uh, and from one moment ago, Carla right. was thinking about how am I going <laughs> to get on. shot to having an opportunity for three. Um, I think it's still fairly quick. You can sweep it pretty yeah. good. Yeah. I think. So two for sure. Final stone on the way here for Carla Thompson. A chance to pick up three after a back and forth end here in five. All you, I'm good, all you. So after trading some singles, it's a breakthrough for BC here in five. Three on the board for Carla Thompson. In a must-win situation, the BC skip coming through a three-point advantage after five. It is day one, draw one of the Scotties here in Grand Prairie. The winner of this one moves on to the big competition. Kathy Goche and I are back right after this for the final five. The 2016 Scotties Tournament of Hearts is brought to you by Cashmere Bathroom Tissue. Nothing feels like cashmere. Welcome back to Grand Prairie, the home of the bison. And as we come inside, it has not been that frosty day as it was outside, but gosh, it is that three on the board that just leaps out at you. And that three is in favor of BC and the skip, Carla Thompson, is with Brian. Carla, that fifth end certainly had some ups and downs. The momentum was swinging. Did you ever think you'd have a shot for three in that end? Well, before Carrie's first one, I did, but she made a great first one, and then we were in a little bit of trouble, and my second one, or my first one, just didn't come up quite enough, but we took advantage of the, the miss and got three. You have a chance to punch your ticket to the Scotties, but had to come through the pre-competition. What have the emotions been like knowing there's so much on the line, not only the last few games, but this game as well? 
really just taking each game at each shot at a time in each game and just trying to get the most out of every shot and enjoy the experience and hopefully we come out on top. I know in Provincials you played in Curling Club Ice. What were the challenges coming to Arena Ice, the swing, the rocks, etc.? Uh, well, that was one advantage definitely to the pre-qualifiers. We got to get used to the venue and the rocks and, and all that stuff. But our coaches have been preparing us for what to expect. So we feel lucky. Good luck in the final five. Thank you so much. Well, let's take a look at the numbers after five. And they're brought to you by Ford of Canada, proud partner of Curling Canada for over 20 years. But when you look at the bottom line, it's been a very close game. And we've seen that. The numbers are very solid. They had come in at 70s and they're building. These teams are getting more comfortable with the ice and conditions. Just one really bad break converted to a three. And that's been the story of the game. The 2016 Scotty's Tournament of Hearts is brought to you by Home Hardware. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. By Ford of Canada, proud sponsor with Curling Canada for more than 20 years. And by World Financial Group, helping Canadians have better financial futures. Welcome back to Grand Prairie, Alberta. Day one, draw one of the 35th edition of the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. Both these teams trying to qualify for the main event. And after five, a 4-1 advantage for BC. Carla Thompson scoring three in the fifth end. And after chatting with her, Kathy, Carrie Galusha makes that big time bailout shot. You thought maybe she wouldn't even score. And then just like that, turns it into a three spot. It really did. And, you know, for Carla, I thought she handled it really well. They weren't expecting that. But you certainly take those opportunities. And she converted to a three. And for Carrie Galusha, at least it happened just before the break it would have given her a couple of minutes to calm herself down for john to do whatever he could do to help them park it and the focus will be to score two here in this end but that rock looks like it slid in it did and so that is not off to the start that the team was certainly hoping to have in this sixth end kathy the northwest territories have allowed five multiple enders this week and four of them have come against British Columbia. Well, that's certainly a testament to what BC, the situations that they're creating. Tracy, 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 roll it off, Kristen, it's hard, it'll go, yeah, hard, hard, hard. Trista Van Dale makes the yellow go away. Okay, show it a nice try. You heard Carl asking her to roll it as far away as she could, trying to take that corner guard game away from Kerry Galusha and the team. But that stone, even though it's not their color, is something that Shona will try to utilize to get Three. behind. Right behind it. Generate some offense. Three out there right now. Key line, girls. Key line. You got to let it move a bit. Here it comes. Yes. Hard line. You got room. Got to go. Line, girls. Right over. Trying to wrap that yellow stone right around Shona. for Shona Barber. Like that. Part of it's still yeah. exposed, and the run back obviously there as well. And kind of wait, nine. That's yeah. what Carla Thompson elects to play. It's probably an easier shot because it is in front of the T line. If you are going to get by there and just tick, you can see probably only a third available from the hack. But instead for Tracy Lavery, we'll just get to the outside, try to run it straight back. Tracy played for Manitoba back in the 1992 Canadian Juniors. And we'll just miss the run back there. Moved from Winnipeg to Victoria, where I'm assuming the climate's a little bit different. Well, marginally, I believe. Yeah, I like that. Here, I got the pleasure of living in Winnipeg for yes, two years. Some did. of the best people I've ever met, some of the coldest winters I've ever endured, and that's from a kid who grew up in northern Alberta, yes. so I know about the cold. Great city, Winnipeg. I had a great time night. during my nice. few years of broadcasting there. No, then. I think it's going to no, over then. curl, Meg. Two. Two is fine. It's, it's going to over curl. It's a two. Yeah. One, two. She was quite tight on that. Stop. That's okay, though. Okay, Nanny. In your playing days, Kathy, did that Fine. work when you talked to the Rocks? Would, would they eventually stop? Does... As well as it does when I talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Well, <laughs> except the rocks are between the ears, so it's a different sheet, per se. Uh, you you okay. do whatever, whatever it takes. Awesome. You just hope that maybe they'll listen. I do it to my golf ball a lot. That oh, doesn't I do work. too. Don't go there. Don't go there. Please don't go there. Ah, there's the push. It's so interesting to see the new sweeping system. I get such a kick out of it, too. When you see a guy like Ben Heber, for example, one of the best sweepers in the world, and he's yelling at the other guy to sweep, usually Brett Lang, and he's watching. But that's just the way that the teams have adopted. It's the new system of you sweep one way to try make it curl, you sweep another way to try keep it straight. It definitely has changed our way that we look at the game when you watch footage of not even that long ago essentially what we were doing was was wrong we have a sweeper on both sides going very hard you're not making it do what you want it to do and so with technology being what it is when you can actually test things and have some certainty about results we are seeing a very different look to our game I know visually it would look hilarious on TV, but do you think we're that far off from having sweepers on the same side? Well, that's where we came from. Right? Like and full circle. It is. It's going, it is completely going full circle. Not any more silly than just watching someone not sweep and yell at the other yeah. sweeper. Very true. Like a cheerleader, right? Oh, that's it's true. fascinating. And those two red stones, back eight, pretty much side by side for Team BC. For Carrie Galusha, she's got some stones to work yeah. with. And both of them are behind the T-line, so which one do you want to freeze to? She also has that tight center guard that she can draw behind. So opportunities here. Slicker than the first, than the fifth. Four, four, or five, somewhere around there. Nine. It's up way, Carrie. Stay close. Yep. Yep. The weight's there. Hard line. Yep. Hard line. Hard. Jonah. Hard, Jonah. Hard, Jonah. Uh, we're, we totally lost one. Yeah, and it's it's heavy. I'm not sure whether she pointed that stone a little bit or they under ice for where it was going. What do you mean, Kathy, by pointed? Well, when you come out of the the hack and you're coming at the broom, if you, in the process of letting go, if you drop your shoulder a little bit or your elbow drops down, then you're going at the broom, but the direction is you're almost pointing it at the direction you want it to go. And a stone that will do that will curl much more than the intent. T line? Yeah, just no more than T. Top four is fine. No more than T. So, a great no. chance here for BC to We're put some right? really significant I'm pressure. Let's split. Okay. okay. I'm just standing back here, sorry. I'm just thinking if we split, we put cars for them. No, yeah. we'll split. I think we'll be like okay. okay. Kathy, during her interview before the competition, Chelsea Carey said, you know what? Yeah, we have Team Canada off the hop. It's Jennifer Jones. It's going to be such a tough game, so it is what it is. We win, we lose. It's a good one to start off with because we got to have our focus. I'd say Chelsea Carey's pretty focused. Yeah. Six one advantage here. This one live on TSN one. If you want to watch it, final stone from the defending champ and Jen needs to draw full eight foot for her single. She does for sure. It is Chelsea Carey line one. It's hard to tell from this angle whether the second shot belongs to them as well, but full eight foot will do it. Her longtime second, Jill Officer and Don McEwen with the brush. Really and Jen's weight is good. She'll so find nice. top four. Yeah, gets her single. So a 6 2 advantage for Chelsea Carey. You can watch that one live right now on TSN 1. Well, an interesting trend, Brian, as we look across the sheets on our sheet at three spot on that 
game that you just updated a four and the Saskatchewan game a five. And I think a lot of that is the whole first game, a little bit of jitters and a little bit of still trying to figure out the ice. And a pretty nice opening day crowd here as well at Revolution Place. The seats are pretty full. Home of the Grand Prairie Storm and the Alberta Junior Hockey League. Okay. Now some great weight on that shot, just over curled. Can you throw that okay? Yeah. Keep the updates rolling now. Saskatchewan taking on Nova Scotia. And you see Saskatchewan has that one red stone in play, but an opportunity here for Nova Scotia to battle back. We should mention that is Sarah Murphy throwing skip stones out of the Mayflower in Halifax. Jill Brothers is feeling under the weather, so not competing in this one. That'll make you feel better, Jill, if it sticks around. And the shooter will stick around. So after giving up a five spot to Saskatchewan in the fourth end, nice battle here from Nova Scotia within one after six ends. And we're down to skip stones here in our feature matchup. Sixth end, this one from Carla Thompson. Big brush, get it by the yellow guard, bang the yellow. And it will spill out nicely, so... BC, shot, line three here with Odin six. Thanks for the reminder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just wanted to swing. I nine five. I don't think it oh. went down at all. That's good week. Nice. Yes. Are we okay way back? Okay. Well, I don't know. That's what I'm wondering. Too. I think we are. So probably freeze to us. Yes. Yeah. Make her make the queen on her. Yeah. Or she'll play that. Which <laughs> she nails it. Then we're going to have to Aim for, scoring, aim for so top that's four. Why I'm I don't really like button because if she does make that, I'm not going to have a shot. So in for top four. Okay. A little bit more? No, that's good. Okay, let's go. Top four. So for Carrie wants to go around for sure, and it's just the discussion's been on the placement. So they want to go higher up. They know that this is the stone right here that will likely be run back by BC, but at this point it really is about trying to find a way to get there and to force Carla to make a tough shot, and maybe there'll be a, an opportunity for two. Okay, same as it's been me. Let's go, Carrie. Let's make it. Carrie Galusha, the intern draw here there. with her okay. first. Well, back here is okay too. Where is it? Wait, it's nice. starting to curl. Yep, yep, line, yep. Yes, line. Yep, okay, we're out. Room, room. A little back. Here's perfect. Look at that yellow stone really making its move. Starts to curl, starts to slow down. Nug straw weight there from Carrie Galusha. She finds top four. weight by Carrie, but you can see that from the hat, Carla can see at least all of that stone, maybe a little bit more. Just get to the nose of her own, run it back, remove the yellow stone. A little more. Nine five. Whoa. 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 Trace. Carla from beautiful Kamloops, BC. Hard trace. Hard trace. Go. Go, 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 go. Okay. And, and the hard trace there. was just the outside sweeper trying to get that rock to finish okay. and curl so that little bit yeah. more. Did not. I think here. Okay. Let's go. So after a frustrating fifth end for Carrie Galusha, like chance to answer right back with here with two. Okay, so I probably need a little less. Yeah. 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 Need a little less weight, eh? Shona said that came down pretty hard at the end. Like she timed up 14. 14's heavy. Eight, right? Yeah. Yeah, because we did actually we didn't really sweep it, so we had just a touch left. Okay. Yeah. 
And I got close to that too. We were timing rocks 14-5 between the hogs earlier that slid. I had 13-9 on Carrie's last one and it stopped T-line. So whether she hit a funny patch or it is just getting slower, that one stone, Kathy, I mean, once it started to curl, it moved almost like, not picked, but it really it slowed worked. down and went sideways, so. I agree. Okay, lots of room, wait only. Key line. Darren's going. Should be really close, curling. We've seen her make big shots at the Scotties before. Carrie Galusha needs one here. Final stone in six. Line is good and the weight really is good. perfect from the Scotty's veteran. The first deuce for the territories in 16 ends versus British Columbia. They needed it. Down by one here at Grand Prairie. It's been six years. My last one was 2010. So it's been a little while, but I'm so excited to be back and with the team that I have this year. It's a new team and had a really good year, so it's definitely very exciting to be back. It feels great to wear the yellow and black uh, jacket. There's not a lot of people that get to wear it in a year, so it's a good feeling to represent your province. That sets up draw two later on tonight at the Scotties PEI versus Newfoundland Labrador. On TSN 1 and 5, Big Rotor will have the call. We're back on TSN 3 and 4, Northern Ontario taking on New Brunswick, McCarvel versus Aroba Show, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time across our TSN feeds. Look at you trying to sound French. I think I did. <laughs> okay. I think I did it. Look at you trying to sound French. <laughs> Welcome back to our feature matchup. And a good one, too. 4-3, BC leading. Team Northwest Territories, it's the pre-competition final. Winner of this game will move on to the main Scotties field. And Kerry Galusha was very frustrated after giving up that three in the fifth end, but that was the skipper's deuce in six. It was, and she was frustrated on giving up the three, and then more importantly, in how it happened. That's just a horrible break for her and those are things that are sometimes just game deciders not only do you put those points on the board but it's hard for you mentally to move on and the single best way to move on is to score that deuce i think that now she's been able to park what happened and now it really is about what you do in seven eight nine and ten and who plays better the numbers are good for both teams they're solid it really will be execution in the final four that determines who will play on the rest of the week at the scotties So Kristen Hi, to make it curl more, Hi, correct, Kathy? Hard, correct. Hard, hard, hard. Kristen, Great shot, Kristen, Kristen trying to push, if you will, that stone in the direction that she was going. And did get it to finish pretty well. comments about the rocks and the Open ice just thinking that yeah, it up? it's starting to get a little bit flatter stones aren't carrying as well stones that they think, think any the their numbers and what they appear I mean, to be are just not going as far way. so something that both teams were hearing keeping an eye on that for like sure brian yeah. if you're just joining us for the first that. time off the top we told you bc won in pre-competition last night yeah, eight six it. and eleven ends so Carla Thompson had choice. She chose hammer, I mean, which meant Carrie Galusha did right? get choice of stones, and she selected these yellow stones. She did. Timeout now being called by the British Columbia team. And I expect we'll see Gary Vandenberg make his way down. 
Gary won Briars with Again, Jeff Stoughton yeah. in 96 and 99. I mean, we don't want to touch this one. That's the thing, right? We're second? Yeah. yeah. Maybe we feel those two. Well, that might come back on here, right? I think it's he's going to tell us to feel those two. I like the peel when you said it. Yeah, yeah you're feeling it? Two? Yeah. Feel the top two? <laughs> those two. The top <laughs> Yeah. Is that, that one goes over top? Yeah, that'll go over the top. <laughs> this is logical. <laughs> Make it hard. All right. Okay, let's go. So you just hit half a rock. Yeah. So smart. It's hard to hear a lot of what Gary said, but it seemed very <laughs> decisive. The first thing he said is, what's going to hurt you? And they felt it was those two yellow guards out front. That would be something that Carrie Galush and her team would utilize to get behind and try to find ways to steal points. And so just confirmed for them that removing those two is the right thing to do. And that is the call. got one and unfortunately for BC left the guard that is guarding the Northwest Territory stone and open up the shot stone that is what now Marcus. team from Northwest Territories will go after with Danielle Derry tiny little nice flip shot, behind Danny. cover and a very nice stone from Daniel yeah, yeah. Derry? Indeed. We need to be. Yeah. Yeah. Nice shot. Thanks. Gotta go. Okay. Going the other way at it? I'm just getting these two? Yeah, or no. Okay. Wanna... I like this turn. Okay. okay. I'll you... just tighten you up a bit. You threw it nice. Okay. Could you get all three, Kathy? You could? For sure. No! Oh no. no. Trista! Trista! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Kristen! 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 Trying to just pick the back one. The audible, and they'll go right through. In order to make those three go away, Brian, and I'm wondering if that was in Tracy's head, is you have to throw that stone pretty hard. And in the process of throwing it really hard, just got a little bit full in it with that kind of weight, it's just not going to come back. And she knew too, as soon as she yes. released it out of her hand, they were off it, just maybe that extra yes. pusher. Yes. What do they teach you? Push with your leg, not with your hand, right? You bet. Your leg drive is what is the source yes. for your weight. Very nice. Sorry. I started to stop myself, and momentum was going sideways. Well, Kathy, you're all four there now. <laughs> Two yellows going, it opens up the front a little bit, which is oh, the most important okay. thing. Nice for Skipper, Carla Thompson. Update time now. Close game between Saskatchewan and Nova Scotia. A lot of battle. Nova Scotia without their skip. Jill Brother, Sarah Whoa. Murphy is Clean. handling Clean. skipping Whoa. duties. Final stone Whoa. from Scotty's Whoa. rookie skip, Jolene Campbell. Whoa. Trying to run her own red stone back onto the shot. Yellow stone. Oh, lovely. Wow. And yes. three for sure, maybe no, four, yeah, four. it is four. So a 10-5 advantage, so much to tell Jolene Campbell, it's okay to score one or two. <laughs> she, she just goes for the five or the four enders. Imagine the poor scores digging through the box <laughs> trying to figure out where those numbers are. Okay. Good, Meg. 
Wow. So some high octane <laughs> offense over on sheet D, a 10 5 advantage for the same Team Saskatchewan. Same weight. You want nine and a half or nine? Nine. Now, the Northwest Territories does lie three. But the advantage for BC is that there are no guards out front, and so it is relatively open. Trying to play the double, still considering that Blank is in play. And now down to Skip Stones. Nice two for Carla because it wasn't too long ago the front was pretty jammed up with rocks and that forefoot wasn't available now a little bit more room for her to negotiate she does have final stone here we know that spot pretty good sorry we know this spot pretty yeah. good nice yeah easy nine and a half yeah okay all right care here we go easy daddy yeah you got it straight through let's go Try to get that stone to curl, that little extra finish. No roll. Nice job. Great. Good shot. And Kerry Galusha lies three without hammer here in seven. You can just see the body language, too, on this Northwest Territories team. So much better after that two spot from Kerry because they were not looking like a happy group after that fifth end break. Long time. And again, it's not just that you give up three, it's how you give up three. When things like that happen and you have the most horrific break where you not only don't make the shot, but you raise your opponent's stone onto your shot stone that was buried, that's when that little voice in the back of your head starts to chirp. I wonder if this is just not meant to be. And so coming back, having that break, coming back and getting the deuce right away, it parks all of that and, Easy. and puts you right Easy. back in the game. Tiny roll, it is not shot stone, but something that Kerry will have to deal with. What they were trying to do is roll under yeah, behind nice. that shot stone, hoping that Kerry would have to run her own back and maybe not Same make way. that and allow the draw for two, but that roll to the wing means it is an open shot for Kerry Galusha to lie three. Yeah. And if she can hey, stick it right there or even roll a little bit to the left as you look at that, it will no. make a tough shot no, for Carla go. because hitting that top stone would not give her shot. And so it would be a decision time for BC if you draw against the three or whether you try and make the hit of the roll off the stone that Carrie's about to throw. Meg! Yep. Meg! Go, Megan, hard. Yep! Hard, hard, hard. Meg! Go, 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 go. Don't stop. Meg, Don't stop. Go, 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 go. Megan sweeping to try hold the line to keep it a bit straighter. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. And right in the nose for Carrie Galusha. Hi, girl. So now a choice, the hit or the draw, and I think with that ice, it'll be a hit here for Carla Thompson. Well, it is because of where Carrie's stone stopped and nose hit. Does give you a shot. Same nice, same weight. Same spot. Same spot, Carla's just thrown in. And the key to this shot obviously isn't just the hit, it's the stick around as well. It sure is. With those two yellow stones up top there for Kerry Galusha. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Yeah. Final stone here in seven for Carla Thompson. Facing three yellows and a big scrub now, trying to hold that line. Gotta stick around, and she does. Just for shot stone. A red on the board in this pre-competition final the Scotties. It's a close one here at Grand Prairie, 5-3 BC.
give you a complex phone call in time out. Welcome back to Grand Prairie. Some faces you know very well. Emma Miskew and Lisa Weagle, teammates of Rachel Holman. Obviously, they'd love to be competing this time around at the Scotties, but it was not to be as they lost in the Ontario final. However, those young women will be helping out tomorrow. A very important day on TSN. It is Sandra Schmerler Day as we will support Babies in Crisis across Canada, an unbelievable charity and what a legacy to Sandra Schmerler. You bet. And it's really nice that players like that, that it, this has got to be the last place they want to be. I mean, they had their hopes on coming to be here as players, not observers. So to take time out of their lives to come and help support a great cause because of a great, great curler who passed away way too soon. That's really awesome. Our feature matchup here on TSN, British Columbia and the Northwest Territories, the winner of this game, single elimination game, will move on to compete in the main field of the Scotties. And is back on the ice tonight, Brian. There is no rest for the Wicked. So as soon as this champion is declared from this sheet, they will take on Manitoba this evening. Manitoba had the bye this afternoon. So Kerry Galusha with hammer here in eight. BC does have two red stones in the house, Kathy, but they are very much usable behind that T line and something that Kerry can use to try generate some offense here in eight. Find that pocket, and that is lovely touch from Shona Barber. That rock is crazy. Yeah, I know. Now they're pretty convinced that Shona has one stone that is just not consistent with the other stones. Not only does it curl more, we talk about how fast it warps, but the weight comes off really quickly. And so it is about discerning what that is. You can move it up to your second for hits, or you can throw it and just be aware of what it does. Tracy Lavery. And this one is curling. She will jam, but... Now that yellow stone on the button is freed up. Coffee. And a chance to use that corner guard. Can you throw your other one first? Yeah. <laughs> Why is that? Did that put two yeah, that yeah. dying? Yeah. And that is why they scout these rocks, Kathy. Well, they do. They know that one of them tends to die really quickly, and they know that this is a critical shot. If she's able to get behind that guard and bury, the chance for two increases dramatically. And they know that maybe she'll be playing a hit on her second one, so they want to have some predictability with this one. It's slowing down a bit. And this one is hot. No, Shona. Not if we're through, Shona. That's a 13. And Carla Thompson will sweep it right through. And that is a bad mistake. Anywhere, even tight to the house, you can split it. But coming deep when you're down two in the eight, then she's not going to be very happy with herself. It is interesting, Kathy. I'm looking across all the sheets and all the skips, and I don't think I see one of them actually using the hairbrush behind the T-line. They do have that option, but I don't think any of them are using them. No, I think that, you know, unless you have only ever used a hairbrush and it's just your comfort, it's probably just as easy to not have to worry about not being able to sweep in front of the T-line with this, the broom that you have. The one funny thing that we talked about, too, that could technically happen if you had the hairbrush and you were doing maybe a, a hit or a roll and using your own stone above the T-line and you went to sweep it with the hairbrush, technically you can't and you would get a warning you would. if that yeah, did happen. Really but line. I guess take the broom out of your hand and you don't got to worry about it anyway. Really so. Well, in fairness to Danielle, if All she's right. throwing two stones that are very, very different for weight, you go through on the first one, you have a heavier stone on your second one, you don't want to throw the same weight, and yet arguably she probably could have, and it would have stopped. 
but it is really tough when you feel that your stones are not matched and there is a dramatic difference. Trying to get it to curl up just a little more, and they okay, will you there, Christy, you threw it nice. get the yellow it's stone to go. I need to get a no yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay, pick me up, buddy. Pick me up. Let's go. Is Megan coming in, Kathy, or another guard? Coming in. Eight. They're still go trying to get back. behind that elusive guard. So eight should be around T line, back T. Uh, back T. Six. six. And now six. Yeah, keep going. Seven. You got tons of yeah, it's Go ahead, down. say it. <laughs> I wait for them to figure it out first. We'll just see what happens here. Six, eight, seven. Yeah, a lot of numbers. Tell you what, though, that's a great shot. Good, Meg. Way to go, Meg. Are you like trying this? That's a good shot. Somewhere in between. As soon as you hear anything between an eight and a six, you know that you're within range. And so for Carrie calling line, it's easier for her to predict within that range when they needed to go or not. And obviously the BC team feels they can see enough by throwing hack weight to get to it. So you often hear yourself, Russ, Cheryl, talk about the pro miss. If you're going to miss, miss the right way. I'm assuming missing here, you want to miss inside. You want to crash that something. guard. You bet. And maybe a bonus if the shooter will stick around, and it looks like it will. They must have hurt us. Yeah, Pro miss. That is a really good miss. Not only did she remove the guard, she rolls the shooter in the house. And the right weight too, Kathy. Very much so. And I think Carla tight iced her to ensure that she got one or the other. Little side Good. roll. Good, Meg. And the territories with Hammer, line two here in eighth. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I feel like it's kind of hard. Do what are we doing? I'm just trying to sleep in two and ten. Time to look at the numbers and we'll focus on the skips here, Kathy. Well, they're very even and really we talk about that one shot by Kerry Galusha that was not only a miss but got a really bad outcome. But really what you're looking at is a very even set of matches and that's why the game is as close as it is. Player comparisons are brought to you by Travelers. It's better under the umbrella. Carter Thompson, her first here on eight. Bang the yellow, roll it over, and she'll roll it under everything. Well, the double wasn't there because of the placement of that yellow against the red, but hoping to roll in front, maybe move those stones around. For sure, stick around. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, clean this path there, Danny. Um, just right, T-line. Line. Yeah. I have a lot of It has to be so full eight, though. We're gonna stay what are we looking for eight. here? Pretty nice spot here. Okay. T-line. I don't think it's tea. as fast as wrong. we think it is. Like, here, here we thought it was going to be a bit quicker, okay, but yeah. it, it's pretty normal. Okay. Yeah. Like, it's hot so don't turn but draw yet at all. I've been throwing all in. I can can you scrub you? that for a sec? There's a bunch of crap on it. Okay. I just don't feel like I'm getting it. Yeah. What split are we looking for, Meg? I'd say probably the same, like an 80, 80? 85. Okay. So yeah. the split time, Kathy, right is the... Seat. Let's go, girl. You know your weight. What Let's for go. the viewers Almost at home? Right it's the, the back seat. line to the hog line. They're talking about an 85. So that's a 3.85. But we don't talk about the three. 
to there, and that just gives the sweepers a bit of a guide if she's within range. Best combo is if you want to use the numbers, your eyes are still the best source, especially if the ice is a little bit patchy as it seems to be. It's crossing now, T-line. You gotta get a T, it's gotta be there. Go hard. Yep, hard. Yep. It's gotta yep. be T. Hurry, hurry, go, go, hurry, go, hurry, go, hurry, go. Hurry, hurry. Good, that's okay. okay. Good, good. Crazy. No. Carla will try to roll her shooter to the other way. side. Yeah. Okay. Fine round straight here. Yeah. You might feel right. So no double, but if she's good. able to roll into this area right here, hopefully she'll have a fatter rock. <laughs> she would like be shot and really tough for Carrie to remove it and sure. stick around to lie to. Let's see what Carla Thompson has with her final stone here in eight. Go, go for the roll! And not enough roll, so it will be an open hit for Gary Galusha and a chance to tie things up here in this pre-competition final. There's a little spot that it just kind of Yeah. Make it straight through. Let's go. Every yeah, moment, Megan. every shot getting more yeah, crucial go. here. Well, clean. Easy. Clean. In our yeah, opener here on TSN, yeah. final yeah. stone. Yeah. Carrie Galusha just yeah, have to hit it on the nose, yeah. stick yeah. around yeah. with the shooter. Yeah. Great shot. And she will. A big yeah. time two yeah. for Kerry Galusha. Really good idea. BC, Way Northwest go. Territories, all tied up here in Grand Prairie. Yeah, really good. Good job, girls. Good job, Sean. Nice way call, buddy. Welcome back to Grand Prairie. Update time. Alberta taking on Team Canada. Jennifer Jones in a bit of a hole in this game. However, this woman did not win five Scotty's titles by accident. She can throw a final stone here, Kathy Gauthier. And I would say this is telling a lot of the viewers that she isn't going anywhere quietly. No, she's certainly not. It is a very sharp double that she's playing to score three and put herself back in this game. Weight's on point, roll is on point, stick it. Jennifer Jones not going away. She picks up the three spot. That was technical. She throws that up weight so, so well. Something that she worked on for a very long time. To be able to throw it well and very hard. Sees the angles oh so well. And nuts it for the three. At what point, Chelsea Carey had a 5 nothing advantage for Alberta. Jennifer Jones though battling back now within two. It's a 7-5 advantage for Chelsea Carey. But Alberta does have hammer. This one you could watch right now. Live over on TSN 1. 7-5 yeah. advantage as you see, yeah. Chelsea Carey with Hammer. We keep you up to date with our coverage on TSN. This has been a fascinating game as well. Jen Hanna, Marie-France LaRouche. Couple twos on the board. Couple steals, 5-5. Five, five. They're in the ninth end. And I hope to the over on this one. <laughs> You see a five on the board, and there's also a four on the board for Saskatchewan. That's a 10-7 advantage. Jolene Campbell came to play. Lots of offense Lots in that one. She's leading by three. And a tight one in her feature matchup. Winner moves on to the Scotties field. The loser sadly goes home. It is 5-5 between Carla Thompson, BC, and Carrie Galusha, Northwest Territories. 
After a frustrating fifth in for Kerry Galusha, she's really responded. Some great battle. And we're all tied up at five. It is BC with the Redstones, and they have the hammer. Well, BC would be very comfortable blanking this end to have Hammer coming home. But if the opportunity presents itself to score two, they certainly will be more than happy to go along with that. For Kerry Galusha, she wants some scoring in this end no matter what. She would absolutely love to steal, but if she can force her opponent to take one, that would be ideal. Does not want to see a blank. Hurry, 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 hurry. We really gotta go. Hurry, 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 hurry. Really gotta go. We're rolling big, don't roll it. Hey, no. Danny. That's okay. You like that? There's no double there? Yeah. I think we, oh yeah, we hit it. Kathy, would you not instantly go up and peel that guard? Yes, I would with my Usain Bolt-like speed, <laughs> I would be up there peeling that guard. Your opportunities certainly would exist if you peel yes. that guard. Please. Carrie Maybe Galicia will either throw it again or hit Be the quiet. stone in the house and you're yes. still potentially yes. going to blank. Yes, hard, hard. do it hard! Hard, hard, hard. Yes! Something else. Yep, 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 yep. Ah, good, though. My fault. Good throw, Trace. It's a nice roll. By what Tracy need, Lavery. Here? Yeah. Probably like a 95. Okay. 95 more. It's out I think there. we need to go. Yeah. It's light. Are you sure? Take a look. Daniel yeah, Derry. Go. Switch and go. Take a look. Take a look. Switch it. Actually, it's coming hard. Go, 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 hard, hard, hard. Really hard, guys. No bounce, hard, no bounce. Get it here. Take a look. Take, Take a look, look right no here. bounce. Got it. Go, 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 go. Big go, 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 scrub, go. and that is a team shot from the squad out of the Yellow Knife Curling Center to drag it that far. Well, and hats off to Shona and Megan for ignoring all the white noise around them to take a look, take a look. As a sweeper, you make that judgment about where that stone will be. You know where Carrie wants it. You have to just rule out all that extra chirping around you and make sure that you take that stone where you think it needs to go, and that's exactly what they did. I think she's going to put it back. And now Carla puts the broom down to remove that yellow guard. Yeah. Hit down. Clean. Clean. Get quiet. Yes. Hard. 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 Go, Trace, go hard. Right out, right out, right out, right out. Good, Trace. Nicely removes it, opens up the front again. right on the nose isn't bad and staying with those two right yeah that's that's good. good keep them frozen yeah we can keep these two grouped hey pardon the hit we can keep Megan in that group hey I can't hear yeah, you can't hear anything. you're good yeah you're good yeah. the other option is to throw another guard Mostly on the red stones, leaving a little yeah, bit of yeah. your yellow stone open. So any so play on it by BC five, will drive right? it into the reds. Okay. Electing to hit. And she doesn't have to go that hard for a point. If she's able to force her opponent or even get out with a blank, she's obviously comfortable with that. Ten. Shona. 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 All the way. I can't hear it. Go. 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 Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Go. 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 Shona. Go. 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 Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Okay. That's fine. So good. Danny, I, what were you saying? I can't, you gotta... Yeah, I, I was... Were you rolling my way? No, it's like a nose. Nice! Is that double there? there? So interesting, Kathy. Yeah, yeah. I've heard a few times the okay. athletes on the ice are having maybe trouble hearing or the communication. And I just think back to our experience in Vancouver at the Olympics in the building. We could barely hear each other with headphones on. It was so loud in that building. 
It was not a curling venue. It felt more like a football game or a rock concert. Yeah, it was yeah, it was pretty awesome. Pretty amazing. But something that you have to deal with. It is. I did a practice with the girls, the junior women's team that I coached this year, where I asked them all to bring their iPhones and, and headphones and wear them the entire practice. And you have to default to other ways to share information. And it's really important because you have to plan around for the inevitability that you won't be able to hear your skip this horse. Um, there's a lot of noise in the building, any of those things. And yeah, in Vancouver, if you didn't have a, a way of showing what you needed, there was no way to communicate. Russ actually did the same thing, but he used a tape deck. Yeah. I believe it was the same. <laughs> He was, he was on the air at our last event talking about transistor radios, and I was just wondering what year it was. By the way, a happy belated yes. birthday to our boy, Russ Howard, who turned an age yesterday. Yep, a big one. I believe he can compete in, in a different category of curling now, but we'll leave it at that. I think it's called Super Seniors or something, but anyways. There he is, there he the is. aging veteran. This one first, Ate too much right? cake last yeah. night. I'm going to give you a little more weight. Happy birthday, Rusty. Pardon? We love you. More weight? A little, yeah, more. Okay. <laughs> Pretty thin, so. Okay, let's go. Kristen Rex Siedler. Gets right. both yellows to go. That's a big time shot for BC. That's a great shot. Nice shot. Makes them both go and rolls it far away. Awesome. Takes away any double opportunity away. With just really nice controlled weight. I've been impressed with her. Kristen's had a really nice game. She has indeed. No. Like with, without hitting that one. It, yeah, it, it really rolled. Even if you had kissed the back, <laughs> it would have been, yeah. been okay, but that was perfect. Yeah. My nor my Nine same. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Kara, let's go. More. You got this. And they roll it over a bit to the T-line on the four. We just got to know where they're going to go That's there. Oh. I thought we just got to know those go there, right? We can't. No, I, I actually thought it was going to... Power of concentration now. This is just the example that we talked about. Some games wrapping up on other sheets. Lots of activity. And I think that any time you play out here this week when Alberta is on the ice, there will be a lot of fan support just judging from what we're seeing this afternoon, Brian. Carla Thompson. Her first here in nine, and she'll bang it on the nose. And to that point, Kathy, BC, a lot of them are rookies here, yes. minus their skip, who has been to a Scotties before. But in the pre-competition, they've been playing on one sheet by themselves, really not a lot going on. And now you have the full four sheets. It's day one. It's night one. It's the crowd's actually been very lively here in Grand Prairie. So all new things, which is really terrific, and it's exactly what you want. But if you're not used to it, well, I think you decide just what you want to throw. I think it's 50-50. What? The double there. Oh, it is. And you heard the crowd, and this yeah. happening just moments ago. We have some handshakes. Team Saskatchewan so. beating Nova Scotia. High-scoring affair, 11-7 the final score. So Jolene Campbell 
Out of the Highland Curling Club, picking up the win. And for Nova Scotia, they opened with a loss, and Jill Brothers like did not play in that yeah. game. Sarah Murphy was yeah. skipping. Jill feeling under the weather, so they have a bye tonight. Hopefully she's feeling better for tomorrow's action. Okay. Megan's ran. Let's okay. go. Now, a bit of an interesting discussion. What are you throwing that nice way? Yeah, Carrie way. and Shona talking about what do we want out of this end? Do we want to try to steal or take points? Which is a bit surprising that that wasn't a conversation that you a had at the break or b certainly before this end started because they considered playing that double. But we just can't go big for the roll and roll out. Um, yeah. So now they're playing the hit and roll yeah. under the red. Sounds good. Just nice weight, like tennis or nine five. No, at a minimum, I'm trying to group but these stones. Okay, sounds good. Kerry Galusha's team spending a lot more time in the second half talking. They're down to about four and a half minutes on the board. You'd like to have at least four per end. They still also have one timeout. Oh, a little bit more than last one. Yeah. Yeah. Danny, Danny, hard Danny. 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 Final yes. stone here for whoa, Kerry Galusha. Whoa, whoa. First things first, remove the red, get a little roll. And not quite far enough, so the open hit now for two. And BC skip, Carla Thompson. I thought we were closer than that. I thought you had it. Shoot, I totally thought, I thought it was just going to pop over. Okay. Okay. Final stone here in nine for Easy Carla head. Thompson. Yep. Yep. Out of her hand, just a nice clean. Needs to hit it on the nose and stick around for her two. Trying to get it to curl up. Shooter's got to stick around, and it looks like it will. Two points for BC. And a team out of the Kamloops Curling Club. Up by two, coming home in a must-win game here. The pre-competition final winner moves on to join the Scotty's Field. In the meantime, handshakes between Quebec and Ontario, and those faces say it all. Marie France LaRouche back in the show for the first time in a few years, and they're on the board with a win. More to come from Grand Prairie. The 2016 Scotty's Tournament of Hearts is brought to you by Sponge Towels Paper Towels. Nothing absorbs like it. The 2016 Scotty's Tournament of Hearts is brought to you by Ford of Canada. Proud partner with Curling Canada for more than 20 years. And by Tim Hortons, official coffee of Curling Canada. Welcome back to Grand Prairie. Time to update you on the defending champs, Jennifer Jones and Team Canada, throwing the yellow stones. Team Alberta, led by Chelsea Carey, throwing the red rocks in the final one here in nine for Chelsea. Trying to run the stone back and remove Jennifer Jones' final stone. That was a draw. What a scrub there from Peters. Run the red back, pick out the yellow, and what a score. Chelsea Carey coming to play in her opener. That is five. And that is handshakes. She's from Manitoba. She's wearing those Alberta colors proudly. And I think that Grand Prairie approves a lot of cheers when those handshakes came to be. And Alberta opens things up with a victory. Only one game remains. You're at Revolution Place, and we've got it for you right now on TSN, and it is a big one. The pre-competition final winner of this one moves on to join the rest of the Scotties field. You see the corner guard thrown by Kerry Galusha. She has hammer, but she's down by two for British Columbia and Carla Thompson. Okay. Uh, just over half. Well, BC doing a good job of getting to the forefoot 
and for Carey, completely ignoring those stones, trying to get around that corner guard. You can expect that after this, it will be all healing by BC. Going after the one in the house. Dead. They're Please, playing it boys. tight enough that if anything, they'll get the top, the corner. Yes! Yes! Clint! Yes! Hard! Clint! 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 Just by the guard and the yellow goes, BC. A wall of rocks there. reminder Megan is down there Megan's the third on the team but Shona holds the broom in the house and so we haven't seen a lot of Megan yeah, Shona. Ten. Oh. Go. want to thank our viewers who are enjoying Alberta taking on oh. Team Canada yeah. a nice win for Chelsea yeah. Carey and Team Alberta want to welcome you to our coverage here it's the pre-competition final between BC and Team Northwest Territories. It is Kerry Galusha throwing the yellow stones. She has the hammer, but she's down by two as Carter Thompson out of the Kamloops Curling Club throwing the red rock. She has the lead. It's a 7-5 advantage. The winner will join the full Scotties field, and sadly, the loser will go home. Yellow goes, shooter goes, and the red settles back four. And for the viewers just joining us, really, Kathy, it's been such a game of momentum, very close early on. A lot of the early ends were very close. We had a blank, a couple singles traded, and then there was that three-ender in five for BC. Really sort of changed the momentum, but full marks to carry Galusha. They kept battling. Well, it's very true, and it's a little bit of a deja vu, I think, for... John Epping on the bench, he said yesterday the story with the loss to BC was a three that was given up. And in this particular three, if you've not been with us, it wasn't only a missed stone, it was a horrible break for the Galusha team that it just wound up removing their own stone in the house. And if you look at the numbers, they've been pretty good. The biggest difference is Rex Siedler for BC, the third, has played extremely well. Carries numbers better than Carla. But as we look back on the game that we've just talked about, that was that key that we talked about in five. It wasn't only a miss, it was a really bad outcome. And in six and eight, the deuces for Northwest Territories, that has got them back into the game, and that's why we're in a very even game. But it is the deuce that's needed now from Carrie Galusha if she's going to play on. The Game Story brought to you by Tim Horton's official coffee of Curling Canada. And now for BC, pretty simple operation. You see something yellow, you just remove it and try to keep things as simple as possible. Well, they'll call their second of two timeouts. Two options. One is that you hit that stone to lie two. The other is you throw a corner guard. That brings three into play. Three would be the victory. We can't play that. No? You want to do that? Well, isn't this pretty easy? Coach John Epping comes out again. Half break for half break. So she can't play the double when you make the freeze. No. So it's either you can play it now or you can play it on your last one. Or on uh, Meg's last one. Yeah, this what are we is Megan's first. This is Megan's first. We could freeze there. <laughs> she can't she can't make, she can't play the double because if she if she hits it too thick, she's gonna jam it here and not remove you and even if she does move you. Be on, yeah. Just you anywhere anywhere like the, the little think we be I'm, I'm okay with the I'm okay with the guard too. If you want for one I'll more guard like that, but I don't like the guard because if we overcurl curl, we're gonna leave her the head and we've overcurled we're a bunch risking of the spot. Our, I think we need to keep we know, two in the We know this we know this intern spot really well from eggs. Yeah, if we can keep it on this side too. Yeah, just the hey, weld it, weld it, weld it right on. She cannot, she cannot play that because of this. Really? Yep. Okay. Okay. Well, you know you're right. Well, no, I'm just. 
So John's you. belief is if you right, go here, go. that end. any attempted double over here will jam on there. As you look at that, it almost seems that it would go across the top of that back red. But I think John sold a good story. And so they will play the freeze. What do you think of there? What do I need down the center here? Does that look good? We're okay on this and side. And that man you're looking yeah. at is a big reason yeah. that Carrie Galusha is back in the game. The she I, I don't think really I sort of lost anything. her focus and that passion yeah. for curling yeah, after okay losing, actually, in this very game last year. And she met up with John at a charity curling event and had a good chat with him. And John Epping's been very instrumental in helping Carrie and the team with focus, with strategy, with managing the game, communication. And a big reason Carrie got her spark back for curling. Right to it. Good, Meg. So a little bump. And now the double is on. Hey, Kristen. Let's go. Well, yeah. Kristen, yeah. Rex Siedler, she's made some big shots in this game. Yeah. This could be huge for BC. What has she got? One yellow gone, roll it over. It's pretty good. Okay. And for now, it's BC lying one on the button. Just need to bump this and sit there. Yeah. Freeze again is okay too, hey? What? Even if we freeze, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Well, yeah, I don't know. Kind of the same I thing if we get a nice little wall back know. there. Step. Yeah. Flat, back four. Same weight, Meg. Okay, same weight. And just a reminder, Sports Center is immediately after our curling coverage. Day one of the Scotties here in Grand That's Prairie. Same weight, right eight. If anything, don't a touch touch more. Don't Megan touch Cormier. Don't yeah, touch more. No, no it's good. Shona. 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 Hoping this isn't the final yeah, rock of her Scotties here in 2016. One of the good things about Megan's last shot is that she did move the BC stone back to be fourth shot. Carla looking for the hit and the little bit of the roll in front of her shot stone. Gotta skip stones here in this pre-competition final Tracy. of the Scotties. Tracy. So much on the line for both of these squads. Carter Thompson, little roll. And she is Tracy. now lying two, one Carla, right at the top Carla. of the button. Well, I think right on the nose isn't bad, yeah, is it? I don't know. We don't need to get rid of okay. two, do we? I think Can't we just know this and sit here? I mean, they're going to be shot, but I can't blast it and roll off. Then that's yeah. the game. I think we should try to get two here out of there. How? Yeah, true. Okay. <coughs> do what you said. What? Do you see that I don't? No, do what you said. Let's go. I think we just no, no, is it moving on this around side? A or bit. I mean, yeah. we got to try to stick here, right? She'll yeah. just. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Just with control. We got to yeah. stick it. Okay, you yeah. got it. And so for Carrie, looking to run that stone back, she felt that if she got to the nose, it would be okay. I'm not convinced that it will be because then your opponent is shot. And if they come down right on top of that stone, you may get one, but you need two to tie. Yeah, we need to tighten that up. Last way. We need to tighten that up. Kind of wait? Just control. Okay. 
Time is ticking on Carrie. She has a minute and 20 oh, yeah. seconds okay. left, which is plenty to throw, but there are no timeouts left. So the decision-making in the next end will have to happen while Carla's throwing Little and down. anticipate yeah, go, go, what go, go, they go, will go. do. Yep. Hard. You gotta go. Hard, Carrie Galusha, Hard. her first go, go, go. stone here in 10. Oh, Keep in mind, yes, yes, Northwest yes, Territories yes, has to score at least two to keep their Scotty's hopes alive. Nice, Carrie. That was an awful slide. Good speed. I am presuming BC is just going to peel the stone out. And if that is indeed the case, how does Carrie score two? It's really tough the right, way those stones are in the back. That double would be there, but their own stone is the catcher and they need two. So that that makes it really tough. A big time shot here for yes. Carla Thompson. Yes. Her final stone here in 10 has Four. to make that yellow go away. Four. 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 Big scrub, want to avoid the jam, and they will. Sit down. Shooter spills out, and now, okay. what does hit Galusha right have for end. two? Right she has to hit the okay. back stone yeah, really thick. You have to hit the back stone very thick. So you come down on the stone on this side, and then essentially what you're doing is you're just pushing this second yeah. red stone to the side. Yeah. But it's tough that because there. that yellow stone is so yeah. close to the second red wait. stone. You're gonna take your time. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of space. If that stone's back about another six, seven inches, it makes this so much easier. Under 30 seconds left on the clock. And there's Scotty's hopes resting on this shot. And it's a tough one. Final stone here in 10 for Carrie Galusha. Meg, Megan. Meg. All the way, Meg. Meg. Hard, Megan. All the way. Yep. Her so hopes of a 10th Scotty's it. birth on the line here has to curl up, <laughs> needs to move over, and it's not to be. A steal for BC and Carla Thompson. Is off to the Scotties. For Carla Thompson, her first ever appearance at the show as a skip. The rest of her teammates, yeah! Scotty's rookie, is making their debut. <laughs> and a well earned celebration for the team out of Kamloops. Just a reminder, we're just getting started here on TSN. Draw 2 continues later on tonight. PEI versus Newfoundland Labrador. That's on TSN 1 and 5. And we're back to call Northern Ontario taking on New Brunswick McCarville versus Aroma Show on TSN 3 and 4. It all begins at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. It is great to be back in Alberta for the Scotties. First time that Grand Prairie has hosted the Women's National Championship. All eyes are on the prize as we will crown a winner at week's end. On behalf of Kathy Gochi and myself, thanks for watching TSN. Much more coverage to come later on tonight. Stick around, folks. Sports Center is next. Enjoy.